Hello, everyone. I'm Stacy Malkin. I'm so happy to be here with you today and with Entheos teaching my class how to detox your life, save money, and change the world. How is that all even possible? Well, in this class, I'm going to tell you my best tips that I've come up with after many years of researching what's happening with the environment, our health, the products in our homes, and how we can make better choices. Uh, and I've done a lot of talking about this topic around the country at universities and events. And people often say to me, um, just tell me what to buy. Tell me what not to buy uh, when I start talking about toxic chemicals and products. And I used to get frustrated by that question and think, you know, it's not that simple. These are complicated issues. Um, but actually, I've come around to seeing that there is a really simple way of looking at this, of looking at how we can make better choices in our homes, um, kind of figure out, you know, what's best to buy to support our values. So that's what I'm going to be sharing sharing with you here today in my top 10 tips. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit of background about myself first. Um, I was a journalist for many years and then in 2002 I co-founded a group called the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics um, with a coalition of environmental health and women's groups uh, that really wanted to look in, into what's in the products that we're putting on our bodies, putting on our kids every day. So we did lots of research into beauty products um, and I've also done a lot of work with food groups um, looking at what's in our food and how to make healthy choices. And all along the way I've worked with some of the leading scientists and researchers in this field you know, looking at what is the science telling us about toxins in food and products in the environment and in our bodies. And so really what that science is telling us, I can tell you in one very short sentence, it's telling us that the environment is our bodies. That the same toxins that are running through the rivers being dumped in the oceans are running through our veins, through our breast milk, and into every baby born on earth. Uh, and there was a study done several years ago looking at the umbilical cord blood of newborn infants. I think this is so important. They found almost 200 chemicals known to be toxic in every single baby. So I think this is science telling us, you know, it's time to really take a close look at what we're doing. Because when we see this picture that babies are being born into the world pre-polluted with industrial chemicals, isn't it time to say, how can we do things differently. So that's really what we're here to talk about today. How can we do things differently? And how can we really um, live our values and the choices that we make every single day about what we buy and what we bring into our homes? And I think it, it is simple when you look at the whole big picture and think, I really think it's time to think about how, how to let go of what's no longer serving us. Um, so letting go of what's no longer serving us. This isn't hard. Um, it's not depriving. It actually feels really good um, to think about things in this way. And so I like to think about a concept I call holistic accounting. You know, thinking about letting go of what's no longer serving us and instead letting in, inviting in what does um, reflect our values, what reflects our love. Um, and so looking at everything we buy in that context I think makes it actually really simple about the choices before us on how to uh, save money and also change the world because when we let go of what's no longer serving us that's actually a huge cost savings so I'm actually spending a lot less now on things that I love that make me feel good and that support my values so that's what I'm going to be sharing with her with you here today in my top 10 tips and um, the first, I like to start with that question, where do we start? Where do we even start when thinking about um, how to detox our lives when there's so much around us that's toxic? And when I think about how to let, letting go of what no longer serves us, I, I, that word toxic really helps me because I think uh, about toxic products, toxic food, toxic messages that are coming at us from all angles, from companies that are trying to tell us how to be, how to feel, what we need to fit in. And letting go of that, um, like I said, it's more of a feeling of relief than a feeling of what can't I have. Okay, so where to start? Detox our life, save money and change the world. Uh, and my very first tip is start with shampoo. 
So every single morning we all have an intimate relationship with the chemical industry before we even leave the house. Shampoo, deodorant, lotion, shaving cream, toothpaste, soap, we all use these products. Some of us are even obsessed with them. Um, and I was for many years, uh, first as a teenager using lots of products, uh, and then later as a researcher and investigator looking at what's in them. And I also wrote a book about the topic not just a pretty face, the ugly side of the beauty industry. Uh, talks about many years of research looking into the question of what's in the products we put on our bodies, how toxic are they? I actually looked up all my favorite teen products uh, for the book and was shocked to discover that I was exposing myself to 230 chemicals every day before breakfast. And that's actually pretty typical for teens. So. And unfortunately, many of the products, as the research that we've done shows, uh, contain chemicals that are linked to cancer, hormone disruption, um, skin problems, all sorts of problems. You'd be shocked at the amount of very pricey skin creams, for example, that actually contain chemicals that are toxic to the skin. So that's a good place to let go of um, and, and save a lot of money, too. So there are some great resources online to find safer products, figure out you know, which chemicals you want to avoid, which companies you want to support, and I really urge you to check out safecosmetics.org, that's the campaign for Safe Cosmetics website at safecosmetics.org. Lots of great tips there for finding safer products, and also the Skin Deep database where you can look up your products and find out what's in them, and that's safecosmetics.org slash EWG. So start with shampoo and all the products we put on our bodies, especially on kids and especially when pregnant. That's a really important tip for detox. Number two, less is better than more. So companies love to make us think that we need a different lotion for every part of our bodies, a different cleaning product for every room in the house. It's all the same stuff. Um, remarkably similar formulas in all the products, for example, when we did our research, um, from the super expensive drugstore brands all the way down uh, to your cheap brands. You know, like Wet n Wild versus Revlon lipstick, for example, one costs $22, another one costs a dollar. It's the same formula. So we're really spending a lot of money on packaging and marketing on products that are the same as every other. So very good to buy and choose um, one high-quality non-toxic product and get rid of the rest of it. So there's a lot of stuff we actually don't need to buy. So less is better than more when it comes to detoxing your body, your home, um, and also saving money. Number three is bye-bye hair dye. A lot of people don't actually like this one, but I have to say when we did our research to look at where the most toxic products are in the beauty industry, while we found that most companies are making the same products, we did find that certain categories are much more toxic than others. Hair dye, hair perms, um, hair straighteners, anything that changes the shape or color of hair tends to be quite toxic chemistry. So, one of the best things you can do to detox, save lots of toxic exposures, also lots of time and money, is bye-bye hair dye, perms, straighteners, or other chemistry-based uh, hair treatments that change the shape or color of hair. Instead, you can try lemon on blonde hair. That's a tried and true tactic. Henna can work for reddening. Um, Heat treatments are better than chemicals, so if you want to go for straightening or curls, uh, do the heat treatments. So bye-bye hair dye, and for proof of that, now, I, I like to talk about this concept with women because I think that actually a lot of people look better with their natural hair color anyway. Uh, and we have a Facebook page to celebrate the beauty of natural hair. I uh, invite you to join us at bye-bye hair dye on Facebook. And would love to hear your story if you've gone gray or gone back to your natural hair um, and kind of what that experience has been like. I think it's really important to support each other in that because there's so much pressure in our culture to dye our hair and to, and to look and be different than we are in every way. Uh, so finding a filter for those messages um, for ourselves I think is a daily challenge uh, and also a, a very important part of the detox regime. 
I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so moving on to number four, leave it at the store list. So all the things we just don't need to buy at all. One of the shocking things for me when I really went through all the research about toxins and products, that there came the day when I realized walking into Walgreens one day, all this stuff is problematic. So much of the stuff on the shelves at stores is stuff we don't need that's unnecessarily toxic, uh, that's just like the hundred other brands that are right next to it on the shelves. And so we're making false choices um, when we see all this products. And a lot of this stuff we just don't need. And I like to come up with lists of things we don't need. And some of the things that I've stopped buying uh, since I started this work have really saved me a whole bunch of money. So some examples, bubble bath, uh, especially for kids. Some of these products are quite toxic. Air freshener. I think that gets my award for the dumbest product of all, spraying chemicals around our homes to freshen the air. Um, so opening a window. Um, Let's see what else I have on my list. Um, vaginal spray, dryer sheets, um, some products actually that do the opposite of what they promise to do. Chapstick can actually dry out your lips. Um, car fresheners, I think those smell awful anyway. Febreze, what is that stuff? I actually saw an article saying, you know, it's the, celebrating Febreze as the first product that actually just created an entire market on its own through advertising. Just for the purpose of selling us something else. So, so much of what we see and hear on TV, of course, and in all the ads is just telling us to buy this stuff. When you think about it, it's just really not that necessary. Adding gratuitous toxic exposures to our home and adding expense where we don't need it. So leave it at the store. Um, work on that list with your kids. It can be a lot of fun for all the things that we don't need to buy. I also have a, a little extra bonus uh, that I, I try not to buy anything from Procter & Gamble, the world's largest product conglomerate. It's really hard. 98% of Americans have Procter & Gamble products in our homes under so many different brands. Um, so that's an extra points challenge. Can you go uh, for a month without buying any Procter & Gamble products? I don't think they make the best stuff, but they have done a really good job advertising uh, that we need to have the whitest clothes and the whitest teeth and, and you know, all these messages we hear every day. So leave it at the store, especially if it's Procter & Gamble. Now, number four, one more thing, uh, one more point on the home, green your cleaning routine. So here's another one where um, the companies have spent a lot of money trying to scare us about germs. Um, germs are big scary things, we have to buy uh, antibacterial soaps to combat them. Actually this stuff is really toxic, it's toxic to the water, to the fish, and it doesn't even do any better of a job than regular soap and water, according to the FDA. So any products that are advertising themselves as antibacterial, anything that has the chemical triclosan in it, that's a really good thing to put on the leave it at the store list. Uh, and, and also just think about some natural ways we can clean. Vinegar and lemon can be very effective, smells great, uh, works just as good as a lot of the conventional cleaners. Um, and again, the one you know, high quality non-toxic product, using it for all the surfaces in your home rather than you know, the 10 different products for every different cleaning job. So green your cleaning routine. And with those first four tips, you're really uh, getting a lot of unnecessary chemical exposures out of your house. And you know, get it down to some products that you love from companies you trust uh, that will give you the same effect, if not better, as a lot of the conventional products we're used to buying. So now I'm going to switch to food with my fifth uh, point, because detoxing uh, and our food that we eat and buy, I think, is one of the most important things we can do, absolutely. Another question people love to ask me is, you know, what's the best product for my skin? And I always say, what you put on your skin is, is not helping. It actually may be exacerbating skin problems because a lot of skin problems are actually coming from allergic reactions to the skin. But the most important thing you can do for your skin is in what you eat. Um, so eating whole foods, uh, drinking lots of water is the absolute best thing you can do for your skin. 
And my number five point uh, on detox your life, save money and change the world is no GMOs, genetically modified organisms. So I'm not big on eating foods that have been created in a lab by companies that are intent on uh, selling more pesticides and controlling the seeds of our food. And that's the situation with GMOs. So no GMOs, and that can be challenging because so much of the food in our stores is genetically modified. Um, most of the processed food in the United States at this point contains genetically modified ingredients. And so a solution to that, um, which brings me into my tip number six, is shop the perimeters of the supermarket. So staying away from processed foods. Uh, and in this way, you're actually detoxing quite a lot because we're avoiding um, sugars, chemicals, MSG, GMOs, all this stuff in processed foods that tend to be expensive for the nutrition and the satisfaction that you get out of it. So spending our money instead on whole foods, um, fruits and vegetables, um, breads and grains, rice, beans, um, foods that I've found many, many benefits um, health-wise and also mood-wise um, when I shift to the whole foods. So shop the perimeter, uh, tip number six, and that's actually a tip from Dr. Andrew Wheel, uh, one of my favorite uh, health experts, and he talks about, um, you know, this is the number one thing to do for health, shop the perimeter. He also has an excellent tool that I really like online, which is his anti-inflammatory food pyramid. So we all know about the USDA food pyramid. This kind of flips that on its head and really does the food pyramid based on the benefits of whole foods. So I encourage you to check that out. Uh, just do a Google search for anti-inflammatory food pyramid. And I have it actually tacked up on my fridge. It's just a good inspiration to keep me, you know, on track. And not that, not that these things are ever 100% or easy, but, you know, I think you go step off the path, get back on the path. And the more we can stay on the path, it's easier uh, to keep going and making better choices. I find that especially true with food. Um, so avoid GMOs, shop the perimeter, and that brings me to number seven, and that's yes to organic whenever you can, um, especially meat. And organic is expensive, it's not available in every community, um, and this is why we have to also uh, make some bigger systemic changes, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But to the extent that you can shop for organic, I think that's a really important place to spend money. Um, so I'm saving money on a lot of things that I used to buy, um, but spending more probably than ever on food uh, because to me that's just an important value that I want to do for my own health and also uh, to support the kind of food system that I want. And I think that it's especially important if you do have to make choices about where to buy organic or not. Certain fruits and vegetables um, are really important. Strawberries, for example, to buy organic because they really absorb pesticides. Whereas an avocado, not so much because the pesticides aren't getting through the skin. So there's some great tools online. EWG.org is a good place to look up uh, the fruits and vegetables that are most important to buy organic. And then meat, any kind of meat, if going for free range, going for organic, is a really important way to reduce pesticides, um, antibiotics, and also, you know, the misery associated with animals that are going through our factory food farming system. I think all this stuff affects us. So yes to organics, especially meat. Um, and then that's really, you know, for food, it's pretty simple. Back to basics, whole foods when you can, organic when you can. Okay, so number eight. I think this is one of the most important and my most favorite in my top tips to detox your life, save money, and change the world. And that is go on a media diet. No detox is complete without looking at how we can reduce uh, the toxic messages that are bombarding us every day um, watching TV. I heard that kids are watching 40 hours of TV. Um, that's such an incredible influence on the way they think about everything. Um, 
and I'm proud to call myself a cord cutter. Uh, this is now a term for the millions of Americans and increasing numbers of young people especially that are cutting the cord, not getting cable subscriptions. So don't have a TV, don't have cable. I do still watch TV online. Um, but and of course whenever I get to a hotel or on a plane with a TV I'm, I'm watching kind of obsessively and, and, and sometimes it's just really shocking to not be watching for a while and then to see what's on TV and just see the, the constant messages especially in the reality TV shows of um, disparaging views of women. Um, so for example reality shows that portray women as conniving, competitive, um, con consumerist, um, just needing ostentatious things and fighting with each other. These shows are not actually reflecting reality. They're scripted to show certain themes about women that are good for the consumer uh, culture that's supporting the TV airwaves. There's a great book about this by Jen Posner called Reality Bites Back, talking about the last 10 years. and It has been only about 10 years, the reality TV craze with The Bachelor and The Bachelorette and all these shows. Um, I love that book because it really just sort of shows the patterns that are in the TV shows that um, people sort of think of as reality, that it's reflecting reality, but there's many dangerous messages in there. And so I think whatever we can do ourselves and to support each other and especially young people in going on a media diet, just getting away from the TV, um, going to alternative sources of news and really trying, as I said earlier, to just put up that filter about what kinds of messages that we're seeing and how that affects how we think about what we're doing every day. So media diet, um, try it, you'll love it. Number nine. Um, number nine is, I, I haven't thought of a great title for this, so I'll just say what it is. Number nine is get political. So we can't just shop our way out of these problems. And this is the harder part of the conversation to have. There are so many things we can do as consumers to choose better products, to shop our values, and that's having a huge impact on the marketplace. Companies are paying attention. They're changing the way they do business. We've seen a huge revolution in the beauty industry. It's taken a long time and a lot of pressure from groups like the Breast Cancer Fund and women's groups uh, saying we don't want toxic chemicals in our products. Now finally the companies are starting to move them out. So that's a good first step, um, but it's, it happens very slowly. And you know the good products and the good food as I said earlier are not available to everyone, not available in every community. So we need to change the laws um, to, to make companies accountable for what they're selling us, uh, require them to use, to understand the health impacts of the products that they're making, uh, to phase out chemicals that we know are toxic, to be totally transparent about what's in products so that we can make informed choices. That's one of the reasons why I think the GMO labeling fight is so important. This is our food system and, and it's been changed in fundamental ways that we've had no idea about. And so now consumers are waking up asking questions saying we want to know about genetically engineered foods and we're seeing how far the companies are willing to go to try to stop that. And it's, it's very disturbing to think about uh, this is just transparency. It's just our right to know that we're talking about. Why is that such a problem for companies? And of course, because there's a lot they're doing to our food system that they don't want us to know about or talk about or think about. So we've got to get political and figure out how to take this incredible energy coming from the new green economy, the demand for safe, healthy products, and put that energy also towards setting up uh, the rules politically that will make sure that we have the safest, best foods and products in the American economy as other countries have already done. So let's get political and there's lots of ways to do that. Um, for the GMO labeling fight, I encourage you to check out labelgmos.org and I'll plug into a state labeling fight. Vermont just passed GMO labeling a couple weeks ago. That's hugely exciting. The tide is turning and it's really important that all hands on deck for uh, the, the state labeling fights to come this year. 
Oregon's going to have a ballot initiative, California has a bill, um, we need you to get involved. And really get involved in any way that you can. Um, it doesn't have to be one issue or another, whatever is, whatever you're passionate about, I think that's where you can plug in. People have often asked me, um, you know, what's the one thing I can do to make the most change? You know, students who are in school or they're wondering, you know, what career should they go into? What major should they have? And I always tell them, do what you love, what really excites you. And whatever that is, there's change to be made there, whether it's inside corporations, outside, in the government, as an activist, as a mom, as an educator. All these roles are places where we can make the change that we want to see in the world. And it's happening. Uh, and I think it's such an exciting time to be alive because we have so much access to information and to engaging with other people um, that are truly making huge changes that are happening faster than we've ever seen before. So that brings me to my last tip, um, number 10, which is to be, which is activism is love. Join the revolution. Um, this is all of this work of uh, thinking about these issues, taking action, talking to our friends and neighbors about it. Um, this is, I think, the challenge and the opportunity of our generation. Um, I'm proud to be an activist and I really uh, want to claim the thought that this is not about fear, you know, sometimes people accuse activists of spreading fear, scaring everybody with talk about all this toxic stuff, but it's not based at all in fear. It's not based in worry, about being worried. It's based in love. It's based in belief and possibilities for the future that we can create uh, that will enable us to have a healthy economy and also healthy kids that aren't born with toxic chemicals in their bodies, um, that are born in environments that are not uh, compromised by these systems that we've set up and now we think we have to continue. And so the old, I think, is passing away in many ways. And every single time we make a choice about uh, buying something, creating something, making something uh, based on our values, based on what we love, what we want in the world, we're creating that future. So I think every bit of this matters. And I want to thank every single one of you for taking the time to talk about these issues, to think about these issues. I would love to hear from you about uh, tricks, tips, thoughts that you have about how to detox your life, change money, uh, save money and change the world. I think that together we will, we can, we are changing the world. And uh, I have a new website where you can connect with me and learn about the issues that I'm working on, movethemarket.org. That's at movethemarket.org, and I've got lots of tips there about uh, the topics that I talked about, lots more on cosmetics, GMOs, food, how to get engaged, uh, a, a great telesummit that I did with Entheos, GMOs, what you need to know. I love the work that Entheos is doing, and I encourage you to check out all their classes. Um, and to just, you know, teach, learn, be a leader in your own community to share what you're finding out um, and really take on the vision that together we can create the world that we want to live in. And we're doing it through the choices that we make every single day about how we spend our money and our lives. So thank you so much for all you're doing and I hope to connect with you online. Have a wonderful day.